What's going on guys, Flint Masters coming back at you with another video, and a very different type of video today, as due to my Blood vs. Water video taking up a ton of time this week, I decided to take a little break from an edited video, and go down the BLM route with one of these what if scenario videos, as today, I'll be giving my take on what would have happened if each medevac player in Survivor hadn't been medevaced. And yeah, before we begin, I want to give a shout out to BLM, aka The Marine in Review, for the concept of these type of videos, and please make sure to give him a sub, as he puts a ton of work into his videos, and in my opinion, gives far too much hate and deserves some recognition for the work he does as his digging deep for info has really changed my perspective on a lot of survivor players and makes videos like these a lot easier for me as well and i try my best to avoid copying other survivor youtubers as i like to have my own little fun niche here on my channel and obviously these sort of videos are more so his niche um but this is one of the most requested videos i see in his comments however the other day i saw someone say that he doesn't want to do this video due to the amount of unknown variables and a lot of these scenarios and yeah fair warning guys a lot of these scenarios are extremely vague especially with the ones happening early in the game so since he's not doing it combined with the fact that doing a video like this would be the only way i could get a new video out by sunday i decided to take a crack at it so yeah we'll We'll look at how that evacuated player possibly would have done combined with how the season would have shaped out had it not been for the evacuation with that said guys make sure to hit that like and sub button as i've been working really hard to get some content out for you guys with all that out of the way let's begin with the first evacuation in survivor history michael scoopin and yeah i've covered this before but i truly think scoopin wins the outback if he doesn't get meta backed or at the very least makes the final three now if kucha does lose the final pre-merge immunity challenge i think the season plays out relatively the same but if kucha wins that challenge they most likely Bagong Ogokor, and Nick is probably number six since he had no real allies on Kucha. And yeah, at that point, Scoopin is in a swing vote spot between Jeff and Alicia, and Elizabeth and Roger. And I think the smart move is to obviously side with the weaker pair in Roger and Elizabeth. Now, to be fair, the final immunity challenge of this season wasn't an endurance challenge, so it's not a foregone conclusion that Scoopin gets to the final tribal council. But if he does, I truly think he beats both Roger and Elizabeth. I mean, of course, both of them were loved by the players out there, but Scoopin just seems so respected by everyone. And I think it's a Borneo like situation situation where yes I'm sure Roger or Elizabeth gets some votes but I just simply think the majority of the jury will respect Scoopin's gameplay more so yeah as scary as that is to imagine Scoopin makes a very deep run in the outback if he's not meta backed and maybe even wins now on to the second meta back which actually took place 10 seasons later in Survivor Panama where Bruce is evacuated at the final seven and I think he still goes home here at seven no matter what assuming that Terry wins immunity now Sari did want Courtney gone eventually after the sketchy questions challenge but I think she still waits until the final six either way to take her out. You know, now if she does pick up Bruce to blindside Corny at seven, you know, then maybe Bruce gets a bit farther. But I mean, I think he just probably gets taken out in one of the next couple rounds. And of course, if Terry does lose immunity, Kasaya all vote for him and he idles out ours. And who knows how Bruce's game or Panama in general plays out at that point. But I truly think the most realistic outlook is that Terry wins immunity and Kasaya vote out Bruce as he was on the bottom of the alliance. Now on to Micronesia, the first season to feature two evacuations, the first one being Jonathan Penner. And while I do think he makes the merge, I don't see him getting much farther than that, as he's probably on the bottom with Eliza and Jason at the merge, and is taken out in the 10-7 to 7 range. As for the second evacuation of this season and James, uh, I really don't think much changes here, as James is simply the next to go at 7 anyway, barring an immunity run, which of course is unlikely considering James never won an individual immunity in his Survivor career. So yeah, probably the most boring and obvious outlook here, as even if James doesn't get evacuated, I think he once again finishes in 7th place. But the true butterfly effect this evacuation has is that it turns this season into a final three you know due to the two evacuations and kathy quitting survivor had to expand its schedule thus making micronesia a final two instead of a final three like it was originally supposed to be so yeah arguably the biggest on paper monster to ever play survivor getting injured cost Suri the win I swear, dude, life is cruel. At Survivor Token Chains, we have Joe getting evacuated at the merge, and this is a pretty interesting one, as while I think Brendan is definitely the merge boot, what happens after that is up in the air. With Tyson winning immunity at the final nine, I think Sierra goes home in that spot, and I think Tyson is blindsided at the final eight once again for being a challenge beast. So I mean, at that point, Joe is now in the majority four with Jalapal, but I do think he is blindsided soon after. I mean, we saw just how close Coach was to JT and Steven, and of course, Aaron was along for the ride as an easy number for Jalapal. So so I think Joe either goes home at six or seven for being a challenge and possible jury threat to JT and Steven, and the final five plays out the same way that season. Now on to the first of two evacuations in Samoa, we have Mike, and I think Mike makes it farther, but I don't see him making the merge. You know, Fofo simply had to keep the team strong at that point. 
point. So he either goes before or after Ashley. You know, I think that's the trajectory I have for him. But either way, I don't see Mike staying in the game impacting the season that much. However, the next evacuation may have a case for changing the course of Survivor history if this person isn't evacuated, and that person is Russell Swan. So a couple things to ponder here. Russell's evacuation episode was supposed to be a double tribal, and if Galoo boats out Shambo there, I think it's an almost guarantee that Galoo dominates the merge. And even if they spare Shambo and get rid of someone like Monica, I still think Russell holds the tribe together and talks them out of blindsiding Eric. Because that's the thing, right? What caused Galoo's downfall in the first place was Eric's blindside. So if Russell Swan keeps Galoo on board at the merge and they vote out Jason, Russell wastes his idol there at the final 12. And now suddenly the foe foes are down 8-3 in the numbers. And yeah, I just don't see how they get out of that. And you know, I'm sure Russell Hans would continue to save himself for a couple more votes with idols and whatnot. But at some point, I do think he gets taken out at the min merge. And yeah, that alone massively changes Survivor history. As it's hard to imagine Russell coming back at that point for Heroes vs. Villains if he did in fact finish in like ninth or 10th place in Samoa. And as far as who wins for Galoo, I speculated one of the Dave, John, Eric trio winning, but that was without Russell. If Russell's there, I feel he's either a swing vote between that alliance and the girls alliance and Brett, or taken out at like 6 or 7 for being too big of a threat. So while I don't see Russell Swan winning if he's not evacuated, I do think he holds Galoo together at the merge, with Russell Hans being a mid-merge boot. Now on to Survivor One World, where we got an evacuation in the very first episode, with that person being Courtney Moon, and the only real effect this has season-wise is that Christina is probably the first boot, but after that, who knows what happens. Now, as far as Courtney's trajectory, I'm going to say she's either a pre-merge boot, or is in kind of like that Christina position where she scrapes on by to the merge, hangs with the Women's Alliance, and is taken out just before the final three. But yeah, obviously not really much I can truly speculate here given the circumstances. And now a very interesting medevac to talk about here as we have Colton get a medevac right before the merge. And once again, Christina is saved by a medevac as I think it's almost certain Manana loses immunity. And she was literally told that she would be the boot that night. So I guess the question here is how much does Colton and his idol affect the One World merge? I think if anything, he probably plays with the girls as well to start the merge to get rid of players like Jonas and Mike, but I just can't see how Colton outsmarts Kim here, even with his idol. Like the only way I can see Colton taking over the game is if he somehow gets all the guys and Alicia against the woman to start the merge. But again, I don't think that was ever realistically happening as Solani were too strong at the merge, which again, you know, if anything, I feel Colton would have tried to, you know, ingratiate himself into that majority alliance come the merge. And to be honest, I have no idea where Colton lands this season. You know, maybe he's the last guy standing and goes out at like five or six. But I think more than likely, you know, this is probably my best guess, is that he gets blindsided at like the final 11 or 10 with an idol in his pocket as Kim uses the Solani alliance to take him out before ultimately forming the Women's Alliance with the season playing out relatively the same after that. Now for Survivor Caramon, we have Shamara being the first of two medical evacuations going out at the final 16. And yeah, I can't see Shamara going much further anyway. I mean, the fact that he was casted in the first place given his size was ridiculous and is either taken out soon after this or is an easy go to drag to the end. However, the big change I think that happens with Shamar still in the game is that Eddie goes home that night. Remember, the fans were already down in the numbers 9-8 to eight going into that episode, with it being 9-7 to seven by the time Tribal Council came, which is why they felt they had no choice but to keep the tribe as strong as possible. However, if Shamar is still in the game, I feel the majority uses him to split the votes on Reynolds and Eddie, with Eddie being the one to go home, as Reynolds plays his idol. And of course, that really makes this season even worse than it already is, as the three amigos antics at the merge was really one of the highlights of this season. We now have another interesting one to talk about considering this is tied for the latest evacuation to ever take place in Survivor and that of course is Eric getting evacuated at the final five from that same season and the situation is very clear here if Cochran gets to the end he wins no matter what the only way Eric can win is if he gets to the final three while also taking out Cochran and the only way I see this happening is if he wins both immunities which to be fair was a real possibility so at the final five, if he loses, he goes home. If he wins, Eddie goes home. And final four, same thing. If he loses, he obviously goes home. But if he wins, things might get pretty interesting at that point. As I'm sure he guns for Cochran there. And while I don't think he gets Dawn to flip on Cochran, I feel like Sherry has no choice but to vote with Eric to save herself, right? I mean, she's definitely the target for Cochran and Dawn if Eric is immune. And in that case, we get a fire making challenge with Eric's fate being in the hands of Sherry. And yeah, I can't imagine how Cochran doesn't win that challenge even further in his resume. So yeah, really not many ways I can see Eric winning the game. Now, I can totally see him making it to the final Tribal Council and being the runner-up, but again, the only way he wins is if he somehow gets both Dawn and Sherry to flip on Cochran, which again, I just don't think was ever happening. Now on to Survivor Korong, where we of course have a record three medevacs this season, the first being probably the scariest medevac in Survivor history, and yeah, I can't really speculate how the season goes this 
early into the game. But as for Caleb himself, I think he suffers probably the same fate as like a Peter or Nick who get taken out for being too arrogant or being in a guy's alliance. I mean, that was literally Caleb's game in Big Brother. And while he appeared to change a bit in Survivor, I still can't see how a guy like him takes down the likes of Aubrey, Michelle, and Sydney. So I do think Caleb is taken out just before the merge or right when the merge starts. Now for the second medevac of the season, we have Neil getting evacuated at the merge. And yeah, another easy one here as to what happens and how it changes the course of Survivor history as Neil and Aubrey are the easy targets and probably get the vote split on them. And even though Neil had the idol, Aubrey was always the main target for the majority. And unless she pulls off some voodoo magic, which to be fair, she pulled that off at the final eight, it's almost a guarantee Aubrey is the merge boot, which again, obviously changes the course of this season dramatically and modern Survivor history in general. Now, after this, what happens the rest of the season is up in the air. You know, do the girls and Joe still get on board to blindside the alpha males with Aubrey no longer in the game? Is Neil the next to go after Aubrey and does his idol spice things up at all? Again, too many unknowns here, but if I had to pick a placement for Neil, I think he's in one of those odd spots where he's always a target or an easy vote, but other threats will be taken out before him. Kind of like Karishma, for example. And that's ultimately the trajectory I have for him, you know, around an eighth place finish. Now for the third medevac of the season, another one that dramatically changes Survivor history, Joe's medevac at the final five. And I think we all know the story here, but for those of you that forgot, Aubrey, Joe, and Sydney had a final three deal at this point, with Michelle the target for the trio. And obviously the only way Michelle could save herself was with an immunity win, but more than likely, the final five immunity challenge would have been the final four reward challenge, which Aubrey won, which means Michelle goes home at five. And at that point, I think Aubrey is pretty much guaranteed to win, as either that trio gets to the final three, or if Ty does win immunity, Joe was never flipping on Aubrey, and we literally saw Aubrey beat Sydney in fire. So yeah, Joe eating too much meat literally cost Aubrey a million dollars, you know, so that's a thing. Now onto season 37, where Pat is meta back in the premiere, and the common thought here is that this changed the season and Survivor history, as Nick was shown on TV as the easy first boot for the Davids. However, that was just a narrative put on by the show to give Nick a great story arc for the season, as he wasn't the only name on the chopping block. Pat himself was on the chopping block for his boss-like behavior, and Lyrsa apparently was also a target for being the weakest. And for what I've seen, it was definitely between her and Nick. However, we still don't have a clear answer to this day as to who goes home first. But for me personally, I mean, we saw what a great player Nick was. I think he would have realized he was in trouble and got people like Christian and Davey on board to save him, with Lyrsa ultimately being the first boot. Now, as for Pat specifically, I think he's probably a pre merge boot, whether he's now an outsider on the Davids or an easy minority boot at the swap, as I just don't see his personality type making it very far in modern Survivor. And finally, we have Jackson to finish us off. Now, obviously I can't predict how much this changes the season considering the season's still going. The only thing we know for sure is that Vati would have also sent someone home in episode one as Taku would have won the challenge. And I'm assuming 42 would have been a double boot premiere like 41. And in that case, Taku enters the merge with five members, Iko with four and Vati with three. As for Jackson, I still stand by he goes home around the seven to eight range as that's where I had him in my preseason power rankings. And yeah, would have loved to see what kind of character he was this season, but sadly it wasn't meant to be, but at least he holds the record for earliest meta back in Survivor, so at least that's something. So there you have it guys, my predictions of every scenario if a medevac survivor player had not been medevaced. Obviously a lot of these were hard to speculate, but I truly do think evacuations like Joe, Russell, and Scoopin really do change the course of Survivor history dramatically. And like I said, I did kind of rush this video. Even though I have been thinking about this video for some time, I didn't exactly do any deep digging. So if you guys have any different speculations, feel free to comment below. And yeah, speaking of that, let me know in the comments if you would like more non-edited videos like these. And of course, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for all sorts of Survivor content. Also, please make sure to watch my AU Blood vs. Water in Blank Minutes video coming out this Wednesday. It would be greatly appreciated. With all that said, thanks for watching guys, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.